is going through something, they will say it's an epidemic in BC, British Columbia. They will never say it's pandemic. Epi means uh, at the point, right? Epi, an epicenter of the earthquake. So epi is at the, at the localized area. Pan, meaning to basically uh, like panoramic, why? A pandemic means it's gone global. So, ooh, remember, these are the words. Cold virus is pandemic. Flu virus is pandemic. Strep throat is pandemic. So you can understand, just because they call it pandemic doesn't necessarily mean that, my goodness, this is horrible. What it means is that this brand new bug is going global. So why is everyone freaking out? Well, because we had a 38% mortality rate at the start. And so that's what we got to contain this, but now we're seeing low rates. But it's like, okay, so, but in our cases, we're seeing mild cases. So as we're gathering information, it's like changing every day. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting a better view of what this virus is all about. So again, it shares some properties with seasonal flu, and it, and it shares some properties of the family that it's in with coronavirus because the flu will be about 1%, sorry, 1%. This thing's at four, so it's a little bit more than the flu, okay? Having said that, you'll be shocked if I tell you this from the CDC, that last year, seasonal flu, okay? Now, when I say flu, that's influenza A, influenza B, pneumonia, all these guys considered in that family of flu. Uh, um, the stat last year, last winter, was 61,000 people passed away. 61,000 deaths. You didn't hear that, right? You didn't get any reports of that, it wasn't on the news, anything like that. The year before that was 70, okay? Since 2010, we have about, uh, I think the stat was something like uh, 7 million. Uh, in the 10 years that we've had uh, seven, uh, seasonal flu. It's, it's, it's astounding. Why doesn't it get reported? Why doesn't the limelight on this one? is it on here? Well, this is very, you know, seasonal. Sneezy, coughing, fever, right, at its mild stage. Of course, if there is a, a predisposed condition because of the person, so long-term smoking, drinking, all these kinds of things, if it doesn't put a person in good health, palliative care, um, because they're dealing with other diseases that are going on associated with old age, or dealing with cancers and things like that, uh, puts a person more at risk, okay? So that's that's that small kind of X factor that we're, we're trying to hone in on. Those are the people that are at risk. So your symptoms are gonna look just like the flu. It's not gonna be uh, you know, anything more than that. It's gonna look just like the flu. But basically, corona is in the family of a, a, a coronavirus. So as I was saying, similar to influenza and what it does, but different because SARS, and you guys have done with SARS and MERS, MERS is actually the Middle Eastern one, okay, respiratory syndrome, and uh, it's under coronavirus. So when we say coronavirus, we're saying I drive a Honda, but I don't know what model I'm driving. So in this particular case, uh, we haven't seen this one before, and that's why it's been given coronavirus disease 19, because there's many others. So this one's number 19. And because that was from the DNA sequence that we got from China in order to say, okay, this is what we have in order to develop our test for COVID. So the other ones, like I said, SARS and MERS, this shares about 83% homology. That means similar in DNA structure to the ones of SARS. And so what's interesting about this particular one is um, when it broke out, we can go into all the reasons why, well, I'm not going to do that, but when it happened in China, there was a huge mortality rate. It was like 35, 38%. And this is what you expect with SARS, which is in that range, it goes over 20%. So do, is this, this is why people panic, because they didn't want this thing getting out, because it had to be a contain. And it was much like Ebola. Ebola is very high as well. It also, you have to contain it. Um, but then what we saw, and this is a couple of theories going out there, um, is that the mortality rates began to drop. Okay, so now we're at a level where we're at now. Uh, that population that had such a high mortality rate um, were long-term smokers. They were elderly people, uh, long-term 
from smokers. A lot of times we're dealing with cultural things here. Uh, Europe is another incident where we have, you know, not the Seventh-day Adventist vegetarian lifestyle. Um, we have a lot of smoking, a lot of drinking, a lot of poor health. And the majority of what we're seeing in, in Italy is of that age group. So you have the elderly with predisposed conditions. Um, you know, I, I've had people come back from Europe and say they love going to Vancouver and breathing the, the great city air of Vancouver because compared to what they were experiencing in Paris was that you could cut the air because of the smoke and uh, the hygiene, uh, you know, things that go on. So there's that. And also, we have high dense population in Europe. So, you know, we're talking about a country in Europe, we're talking about 100 million people, but where we're seeing these things is in uh, areas of larger populations, right? So that's what we're seeing. So when we saw the, the rates drop, the morbidity rates, mortality rates, um, the thought was, is there, are there two strains? Now, the thing with the coronavirus, and I'm not gonna get too technical, but it's an RNA, there's DNA and RNA, it's, it's an RNA virus. And what RNA virus is, um, DNA is much more stable. RNA, RNA is less stable outside. So therefore, that's good news, it's an RNA. The bad thing is it's part of the corona, which there's associated with severity there. So what does it do? And that's the problem with corona is like this, this new one, is we don't fully know exactly, but we're knowing more today than we did three weeks ago. Okay, so the idea here is that the RNA viruses will mutate. Okay, they will mutate. And so do we have two strains in China? The one that did this huge factor at 38% right away, and now we have another strain because it's mutated, okay? And now it's less virulent at the 4% level, what we're seeing right now. Theory. Or um, did this thing just mutate? So that's the two theories that are out there. Do we, are we dealing with two different strains or are we dealing with the mu mutations? And the reason why I, going with mutations because uh, working on uh, what we're doing at CDC, uh, we're seeing that the strain from RAM is different from, and when I say strain, I wanna say the, the molecular makeup of it, okay? Do you, do you have any problems with what I'm saying? Just raise your hand. I don't get what you're saying. So the molecular structure, it's different. Now it's still Corona uh, virus D19, it's still the same one, but there's some changes there. And what happens with a virus, when it infects a cell, um, it's completely different than a bacteria. Like if I'm a bacteria, let's say I'm the size of a bacteria, all right, how do I, this will be a virus. So a virus will attack the cell ruptures because of the viral overload and you get more viruses. So a bacteria can't infect a virus, a virus infects a cell. So this is why antibiotics, when you're given, uh, when you go into a doctor, you have a viral, they don't really give you antibiotics for the virus, because it doesn't work against the virus. Antibiotics actually disrupt the cellular wall of bacteria when the, when the bacteria is making its wall. So I'm putting on my jacket, this is my cell wall. What an antibiotic does is it makes me not be able to put it on. And now I'm totally exposed to the immune system, I can't function, I get swallowed up by the immune system of the body. So that's how antibiotics, so if they're ever giving you antibiotics when you have a viral infection, it's because they're trying to fight off the second infection. If anything happens because your immune system drops, you're fighting a disease, they don't want to get you a second disease. Now, having said that, we're at about 6,000 right now. Um, I'm just checking the latest stats, about 6,000 deaths globally. And you're thinking, this is big, this is big. But we're still at that 4%, we're still at that 4%, so again, the strain that we see in Iran looks different than the one in China. Are we talking about two different strains or are we talking about an RNA virus that is mutating? So what we're getting on the West Coast, is it the one from Iran, is it the one from China? These are the questions. Because what we're seeing on the West Coast is it's actually quite mild. We're, we're seeing it quite mild in the majority of cases. Okay, so what we have here, we're probably up to 70 um, cases in BC right now, one death, and that one death was an elderly man who had a condition. You know, and, and we're even saying, you know, does, is age a factor? Because we're usually saying elderly, elderly, because that's what we're seeing in China. We're seeing 
in Italy that we're seeing in Iran. But the other factors involved is what I'm saying about health, is we're not seeing healthy individuals to begin with in those age groups. So we're seeing that here because a 90-year-old man walked at Hollywood, we thought, and Holly um, brewed a uh, hair home there, had the disease, and we thought, for sure, no problem. So interesting, healthy individual. But the other person that died was not a healthy individual to begin with. And that's why we cancel the singing dance and things like that, because bear vent with us as singing fans. You'll see people that are not in the greatest shape. And the last thing they need is a pumped up food to go after them as well. And so that's why we took restrictions today, right? Because the idea here is to change the curve. And so how infection control works is you stop the disease by containment. So SARS, we stopped it at VGH when we had the one patient, we contained that patient, it was over, right? Uh, so was it in the other countries as well. This is the thing. The higher, this is just the nature of viruses. If you learn anything today, this is it. The nature of viruses. This is, this is virology 101, okay, this is it. The higher the mortality rate of the virus, we're finding the lower the transmission rate. That's an interesting point, okay? The flu shot, and they haven't reacted well to the flu shot and passed away. So very, very fragile society we have with our elderly. And that's why there's the concern, excuse me, that's why there's the concern there is because they're not doing as well as the rest of the population. Kids, we're not even seeing it. It's like 0 0.001, 0, 0, 001. Uh, but right up to about age 60, you're getting about a flu rate. You're getting anywhere from 1 to 1.9%, 2%. But once you pass 60, it begins to jump. Now remember, this is globally. This is globally. So we're we're attaching our data with all these other elderly and, and uh, sorry, not elderly, but being in poor conditions and things like that. So the data can be a little bit misleading sometimes, right? Um, so right now we're seeing if you're a good, healthy individual, you're washing your hands, doing what we do, proper hygiene, it's we're good. We're good. And if you do get it, some people are getting the flu and they don't even know that that's actually COVID-19, right? And that's why the test is saying, well, if you think you have a fever, once you hit that fever stage, that's when you should get you should get it, uh, tested. Um, so yeah, we got it's done. So how do you differentiate between it when something's like Sam was asking me, uh, what are the symptoms? They're very much alike, and so that's the case right now. But the good thing, I mean, in, in uh, here's my theory, is that we're seeing lots of stuff in Iran, China, and Italy with higher rates. And I really go back to lifestyle of those individuals uh, because they are, uh, they're seeing their long-term smokers. And so, so they have conditions over their lungs uh, going on right now. We're not talking smokers in two, three years. We're talking smokers since they were, you know, teenagers. So when you're in your 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, it takes an effect. You, you don't have the capacity to fight infection at that stage. So our health message is very, very important. Okay, every flu uh, season. So why don't they talk more about the flu deaths than this one? Two things. With the flu, seasonal flu, we have a vaccine. We have a flu vaccine every year. Is it effective? Obviously not as well as we'd like because you still get deaths every year. Right? Now that's because a lot of people, you know, maybe they don't take it, or again, they're in countries, this is globally now, not just Canada, US, globally in countries where they don't have that health care. Right? So flu dehydrates you, right? Flu uh, messes up with your lungs, takes your capacity away, and if you're not hydrating yourself, you're elderly, you're pre predisposed condition, it can cause death. Absolutely. 60,000 last year. This year is a little bit different now. Remember to mention that because what we're doing is to have an effect on that number. Uh, so yeah, we have that. Um, also, with the vaccine, they're saying, well, we have treatment for it. You can't treat a virus. All you can do is start on 
against it. So the vaccine is that aspect. The vaccine is, is dead viral material. Okay, it's dead. It's supposed to be dead. So once you inject dead viral material into your body, your immune system says, look, a something that's not supposed to be here. Daryl has come into my house and he's not supposed to be there. So I will attack Daryl. Right? And I will attack Daryl and invite some friends along. So that's my immunological response. I invite some friends along and we attack Daryl. And we get Daryl. Okay? Now my friends never go away because I invited them. I responded by saying, come, come. So the next time Daryl comes into my house, it's not just me reacting, but now I have myself, my friends, and their friends. And so now you're developing an immunity because you have a better immunological response to what enters your body. They call it a secondary IgM response. So they have that. Uh, so that's how a vaccine is supposed to work. Okay, so why doesn't it fully work? We're dealing with RNA viruses. They love to mutate. So that's why you get 50 to 70% effectiveness with vaccines. Sometimes it's even lower than that. Because, and that, that's why it takes so long to make, because they have to get the makeup just right. If you only get about 50% of it, well then 50% good, 50% bad, you're gonna get it. You're not gonna get a great immunological response. And some people have seen that uh, you know, how they made the vaccines. You get the vaccine shot, you get sick. Some people have reported that. There's an allergic response to that, right? So other things happen. So there's that aspect. But for, for the medical world, they'll say, well, we have a vaccine. We can stuff out on the market, so we're good. And if people die because of it, it's like, well, that's the way it is. That's pretty much the mentality. What makes this different is that it's absolutely brand new. It's never been in the native population as far as we're concerned. I say that with a smile because it could have been there. It's just that we have a test for it now. When I, my main job actually is in the cancer treatment called cancer tuberculosis. And uh, Ian and I have been there for 31 years, a long time. I should have retired, right? <laughs> 32, 30, 32 years, wow. Just aged myself. When we started out, we were identifying a cancer database of about 25 different species of mycobacteria. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is the full name. Uh, when molecular methods came out in the 90s, we went to about 75. When we went to even better molecular methods in the early 2000s, we jumped up to about 125 different species. And now with our methods, we're over 200. Are you telling me the species never existed before? No, we just have a test for it. So we're testing. So if I have a test for Sammy, you know, and I'm going through all this, does that mean that none of you are here? So in our ubiquitous world of microbiology and bugs and uh, bacteria and parasites and uh, yeast and molds and everything, we're uncovering a whole world out there. And so where did this thing come from? Bats, you know, snakes, you've heard all that bat droppings and the animal world. So it's considered a zoonotic virus, that something that transmits from the animal world to the zoonotic, or so, sorry, to the human uh, race. And so that's where we're seeing something that we haven't seen this before, right? We haven't seen this before. So how is it going to react when the weather lines up and things like that? We're hoping that something just like it's kind of relationship with the influenza where it just kind of dies down. Uh, so there's that hope as well. We're assuming it's going to be like that just because of the way things are going in the southern hemisphere uh, because they're experiencing summer, but they're just about to go into fall. And as they're going about into fall, we're starting to see Australian stuff. So it could be temperature dependent, but again, I won't know this for another month. Right? So again, we're, we're on that. So basically, um, the idea behind this whole thing of what we're doing now and shut down everything is every bug, every organism will grow with an exponential rate. And so instead of going from 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, it goes 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 524, you know, so it, 526, 
just like the computer, right? 128. <laughs> uh, it goes that way. So what you see in this room of bacteria is an exponential. So it'll start off, you know, two, four, eight, going like that, and then it'll hit that peak. And what you're seeing in the news now is they're saying, in their exponential basis. Okay, so that means that it's going up like this. That is the point where it levels off. And in infection control, the idea is to drop off. But that being an exponential, this is just normal. And this is what I said, guys. Woo! And then it's gone. Right? What's the problem? And the main factor behind doing these conditions right now is our healthcare. Our healthcare cannot sustain exponential, meaning when people are getting sick, they're going to go get tested, right? They're going to be hospitalized for elderly and things like that. Um, when I worked on SARS, I think I mentioned this this morning, but again, when I worked on SARS in 2002 as one of the techs uh, being trained for that project, um, normally we do about 100, 100 and, I, I wouldn't say 150, 120 tests a day. Uh, during that time, we were doing about five, 600. At one point, we peaked at 800. And I was like dragging my knuckles on the ground. We were just like, this is, can't do that. As of Thursday, we hit 2,000 with coronavirus. It's unprecedented. And uh, so they're just pulling people from different labs to try to help out. And so if we let that go, we can't sustain it, healthcare wise. As people get sick and things like that, it's gonna be no place no beds and things like that. The testing, we can't do 2,000 tests, so there's going to be a lag now. So the whole idea is we've lost the containment. So the first step in, in infection control is containment. We've lost that. And I think we really lost it when we saw the NBA players get positive, and that would set up the whole domino effect. Because he went from East Coast to the West Coast and back, and it was like this thing is, is pandemic. And that's when WHO announced this is pandemic. This has gone global. So this is, has a high communicable transmission rate. It's going. So with that, we realize that we don't have to into this, uh, of this virus. So we have to go to the next level, and that's mitigation. So mitigation is this. How do we control that exponential phase? Well, some countries have done this. Italy was slow, and that's what happened. China was pretty quick. And so they had a little bit, uh, yeah. Correct. So what you do in mitigation is you try to isolate as much as possible. So what we're seeing is the shutting down of events where there's more than 250 people, uh, you know, uh, times of traveling, we're trying to cut that down. She's a great dad. I walk the halls with her, so she's a very nice lady. And, uh, you know, she was just saying that it's like, um, uh, she knows where this is going, but her idea is, is back in the dark, SARS days, is she wants to bring that exponential curve down. And the way to do that is to spread it out. So she hasn't closed schools yet, and things like that, because it's not, uh, you know, that population is, is okay. Uh, but again, I don't know what's gonna happen in the next week or so. So trying to limit travel, from the United States, because Washington State is a mess. Washington State um, really dropped the ball. Uh, we were developing this test, and we have some geniuses at our center. Uh, they developed the test back in uh, late December to early January. So we were ready to roll. And just to make this, this is a, I have to tell all of these people, they had this test That's absolutely unheard of. You just don't do stuff like that. Now the validation obviously wasn't a full out validation because there was a pressure, let's get this thing going. Um, because they understood, they understood. Whereas Washington State, Oregon, they're just kind of sitting back and oh I don't think it's you know, whatever. And whatever they came up with, it was not they, their test didn't even work. So ours was working right away and we tested it a few times, it works, poof, let's go to it. And so we were able to uh, jump on this faster than Washington State. And uh, so where there were people that were sick, and they were okay? 
but it wasn't perfect. Yeah. I, is there no global test that came out of China? Does it need to be that they they released the DNA sequencing, right? So they the, they 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 gave us what we got from China was the DNA sequencing service. So that's what we were able to. If it wasn't for these three geniuses, it would, we might be like Washington State. Uh, but these guys put it together and, you know, it was effective. I mean, within one week, we had this. So now, yeah, and so this test went to Winnipeg. They looked at it. They confirmed it against their controls, and they said, you guys are good to go. And they stamped it. Because Winnipeg is our reference lab. That's the level four lab. We're a level three lab, right? So that's level four. That's incurable. Highly contagious, highly communicable, uh, but treatable. So that was the difference there. So we got to jump on that. What happened in Washington is that this was pulled back. And so now we're trying to catch up. So as we're just starting to see their exponential here, they're, they're jumping in the, into the testing phase at the exponential. So they got this like, oh my goodness, it's overwhelming our systems. So instead of starting when this thing was going, because if I don't test, does it mean it's not there? It's there. So as it was doing its thing and then going up here, and if you're gonna test here at this point, you're gonna run into problems. So we were testing in the serials, so flat line, and look what we have. We have 70 cases, one death, right? Uh, Oregon's got about 50, 60. They were a little bit better. One, uh, five deaths. Uh, no, they have no deaths. Right? California, California's got 200 cases, right? Uh, five deaths. Washington State has 600 cases. 600 cases because they didn't test early and didn't contain. So, cats out of the bag. Now you're dealing with 600 cases. Where are you gonna put people? all that kind of stuff, um, it taxes the, the system. We have a public system, we have a private system, won't go into that, but we have 40 deaths, 40 deaths, less than 40 deaths. Now, that's a lot, right? And you're thinking, what's going on? Well, the data's a little bit obscured there too, because the majority, most of those deaths were coming from that one parasite, and that was the issue. So you're dealing with people again, that have uh, you know debility uh, condition going on, and so and it was focused. So it's one dog, so it's all very local. So it wasn't like thirty-seven all over the state. Uh, but the government has issued that statement that if you go to the states, and I got you know. The, the, um, my phone goes off in the car, and there it is, BC Center for Disease Control. And the whole time I'm joking around, thinking, I think these guys are going to call me back. And then I have this thing with MCP after two weeks, so I was just like, well, I'm supposed to be in Portland today, if you can believe it, uh, but I'm not, because of this situation. So I got the phone call saying, Nick, basically, if you're going across the border, Alright, so as of Thursday, it was if you're going to come back, you have to look at two weeks. But it was very like this. As of Friday at 4 o'clock, it was two weeks, no pay, uh, no discussion. So you see how things escalate, alright? So I have no problem because I was to talk to my people, give them a taste of what was happening on Thursday. Uh, I said I wanted to really be part of Dr. Byham's plan. To mitigation. So, what does that mean for us? Use proper hygiene. Okay, wash your hands. Be responsible with what you're doing. Treat folks basically like flu season. Because, um, remember I said that stat I wanted to release? How many of uh, America's 50,000 last year, 25,000 last year have been treated with flu? This year it's been 21. That's in direct correlation to what people are doing. Because proper hygiene and things like that. You know, to people that are, are in debilitated states and things like that, um, 
you know, it's working. Now, we're not out of it yet. We're not out of it yet. But obviously, we probably one of the lowest seasonal flu rate deaths in, in, in a decade. So that's good news. So basically, we're, we're just asking the practice as you always would. As I said to the prayer line people, if they were speaking once a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> um, keep yourselves hydrated. Viruses do hate you. And that's the main thing that they would like to do. So keep yourselves hydrated. Fruits, vegetables, vegetarian lifestyle, exercise. Um, you can see what our doctor, our medical officer, um, Family, be with your family and things like that. So um, it, it's good because again, we're seeing mild cases here in British Columbia, except for the one or two people. Now there's still some people that are sick, um, but I haven't heard that only the one person has passed away. But the people that are sick are um, have conditions beforehand, right? So so we're see, we're seeing. Good things right now, and that's why we've gone to mitigation because we want to drop that curve. Okay, we want to drop the exponential so we have fewer cases in the next few weeks so that the healthcare system can catch up to it. Because we can't do 2,000 tests a day, it's impossible. So we can catch up to it, um, we can get control of this, and then you're going to have fewer casualties in our elderly uh, population. Um, but what that, that mean is it means we prolong the season a little bit more, okay? So we have two options. You go really fast and bang, you're done. And that's what happens normally with seasonal flu. And, but then you're dealing with a healthcare system that can't handle it. Or you do it the Tony Henry way, which is called mitigation. Yes? Yes, it's called listening to Mrs. Black. <laughs> hydration. So the idea here is to keep your immune system going strong. But this is something I would be telling you during the, uh, the flu season. You know, I'd be telling you this because this is how the front vaccine works. Remember I said the mild symptoms. So you can get something like a cold to fever, but you're down for a few days, or you can get full out flu. Now if you guys remember when I got sick last year in January, remember that one pastor? <laughs> Never been that ill before in like 30 years. Never. Even my wife said I've never seen you like this. And uh, whatever I had, I have no idea. And I did not expect to get COVID-19, right? Uh, but because is it out in the population? And uh, because this is the thing. This is the thing. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to take. Chinese, I love Chinese people. Love Chinese people. Your government, however, <laughs> you know they say what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. We may never know exactly what took place in China. Because there was a stall. There was a stall between what happened and China to win the American Cup. Okay, kind of like the Chernobyl effect. Uh, you know, Russia's pretty quiet too right now, aren't they? Um, you know, oh, we, we hear about South Korea. So you're telling me that nothing's happening in North Korea? So, right? Things are going on, so um, the two strains here, the morbidity rate, the high morbidity rate, was that two strains? The red flag came up for me when I found out and confirmed with our colleagues is that in Wuhan there is a level four. Same as what we have in Winnipeg. Now, what we have in Winnipeg is we built a bunch of war lab out in the middle of nowhere, just in case something happens, anything gets released, it's got nowhere to go. 
They built at Wuhan for what they call their kind of secondary style city. So it's not like their big city, but not like their big city. Not like their big 18 million people, not like their big city. So that's how many you know, population we're dealing with in China. Um, but it's more of a rural style city. But not the China. So they built this level four lab there. This thing is related to SARS. It's, it, it, it has 83% of the homology, the DNA sequence of SARS, level four. Um, you know, I speak privately on that, but I'm having this feeling that, you know, is this about that? Because the Chinese people have been doing this for hundreds of years. And so why didn't we see this last year? Why didn't we see this? Because high mortality rates. That's what we got alerted. What's going on? Um, so that's why it's interesting about the strain theory. The one that was, you know, again, it's a theory. Something's going on. I share this with my colleagues. And uh, only when a uh, uh, person at work, I won't name him, but um, he said, it looks like we do have uh, a, what's in Iran is different from the one in China. So that's when we're sort of thinking, well, this, we're not, we may never know. Because we're dealing with a government that's not going to tell you everything, okay? So we may never know. So the only good thing I can say is that in our country where we are in Canada, history, uh, it's looking like a normal flu. Now remember, when I say normal flu, people don't want to say like a cold. No, no, normal flu does, is very debilitating to elderly people, okay? So that's what we're seeing, our, the demographics here. Now I'm thinking with California. Lifestyle, like you go to California, you can find tofu burgers. It's it's easy. Vegetarian restaurants. It's easy in California. They got sunshine. They're big on it. You go to Oregon, it's hipster country. You know, I was looking up Happy Cow. Like that. Like, you know, so they're very hip in into health. Um, you know, I think it's you know, are they as healthy as we are? I don't know. some issues going on as far as demographics and their home situation and things like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But it is the evergreen state. So is it just, just because they started off too late? And so when this thing took off, now they're like about, a few, you know, two, three weeks behind it. And that's the problem. Two, three weeks, they're probably a month behind this thing. Whereas we were doing it in January, these guys are starting to do it now. And that's just way too late, way too late. Sorry, is that, yeah? Can you say for the record, um, just for the, <laughs> for the record, no. <laughs> just like, what your credentials are. Oh, oh sorry, I don't know what else. and respiratory. I also work in relationship with the uh, biosafety uh, office of the British Columbia, right up the province, um, certified in level three containment. Um, so that's where that comes from. I'm also certified to handle uh, transportation of dangerous goods. So when Ebola was happening, um, I was called for that as well. So I'm associated. Uh, with this one, it's interesting. Um, I almost uh, injured myself with Corona. I'm, I'm in the retirement stage, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it took me a young life now, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, because everything's just gotten so molecular, and like I said, we have some great, great, um, you know, younger, not too young, but younger uh, people. Uh, fantastic in molecular technologies, and it's just you know there's a time, there's just a time when when you let the thoroughbreds go and and the guys like me, which is you know it, it, you've done your time, you've done SARS, you've done Ebola, let's let it do Corona. I'm okay with that, but I have a feeling that my time is going to come up about that. I need to do <laughs> so. Um, so that 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 could uh, happen, but yes, uh, with the Center for Disease Control. So yeah. Just one more thought. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, they say that the 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 rate in Wuhan is going down. Yes. But I have seen the measures that China went through. Yeah.
Yes. Bring that freedom. Yes. And I know that in, the, in this side of the world, there's no way these governments are going to go to that extent because the first thing they're going to say is human rights. Because if in China, they literally padlock it to your house. Yeah. They went door to door and they test everyone. Yeah. And if you show symptoms, they drop you out yeah. bodily to the quarantine center. Mm -hmm. That's what they did in China. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is it, are they prepared to do that here? Go to that measuring sense? To sustain it? Because, I mean, we're still so relaxed about it. We still go on. We still need it. And it's it just slowly, gradually spreading. I don't know if we're I don't know if we're so relaxed about it because we were doing it in January when nobody was really even uh, looking at it. Um, so, because the idea is to contain, 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 and we had to go through it. And I said, I'm asking you, you know, I, I had no idea. Like, I had to ask them not to. How difficult was that? Um, and that was hard. Now, I totally understood, and that's what I enjoy dealing with Christians. It's not like I'm trying to be, you know, anti, but I, I just want to follow this program that BC is under right now. And uh, so that's why I'm, you know, keeping it under 250 and all that. But also with, because, because Washington State, and this is interesting, Europe is now considered the epicenter. What happened to China? The China was the epicenter. Now it's no longer even being called the epicenter, because it's in its decline, it's now Europe that's the epicenter. See, so if you don't take things, you know, appropriately at the, at the exact time, so was my not allowing these African states uh, visitors in here overkill? Absolutely. But at this stage, I'd rather be condemned and have things thrown at me than be sorry later on. That's my attitude right now. So I don't mind and being called all sorts of things. I've always said, my Italian father, you can never outdo my Italian father. If you go through this season and people have not rushed up with this virus, that means their immune systems have never come into contact with it. So what happens next year if it's still in the environment and you go through a secondary wave? Now, the thing with secondary waves is usually smaller than the first wave. Right? So you have, we got an outbreak of influenza. They have an outbreak of influenza in Italy. Have they ever had an outbreak of influenza in Italy before? Of course they did. But it's the second, third, fourth waves, right, of this thing. But, uh, you know, they're always supposed to be smaller until they change the mutations, or the, the virus change the mutation. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a good idea, um, I don't know, this might sound stupid, but why don't we just cough on each other and get the virus and get it over with so that we have an immune, it's an immune issue? Yeah, it's only because you're going to get the flu, right? You're going to show flu-like symptoms. And then that's going to affect, you know, the economy and all that. So, um, and because it's brand new, so we're saying right now everything's fine, but it's that elderly population. I'm going to rephrase the question. Why don't all of us who are healthy <laughs> go get ourselves? The, the coronavirus suffer through it for a couple of weeks and build our immune system. Yeah, well, because you don't, sometimes you just don't want to, like, what do they say? Uh, you know, poke, poke, the bear. Bear. They poke the bear. Poke the tiger. Poke the sleeping bear. Because remember, we've seen, is it two strains or is it a mutated strain that we have? Um, I would rather just get rid of it, but yeah, you're right. You're right. But what's going to happen is then you get a vaccine and that's it dead virus so then you don't have so there's it's a good it's a good point how do you you do it this way or you do it that way if you go through it you're going to have a lot more casualties because it will rip through the elderly population okay it will rip through the population and why is that thing you know because remember from baby boomers and we knew this 20 30 years ago when i first started working you get into a great line of work if you want to want a job you're always going to have a job healthcare because from 1940 to 65 is your baby boomers. And they're all hitting the 60 to 80 range right now, right? And that's where your geriatric care. So you have this surplus, many people in this age group right now. That's the problem. So if we're okay with it, and these guys are having a difficult time with it, 
if we eliminate, like, it, it'll be horrendous, right, to eliminate. But we're seeing that healthy individuals are, are okay with it right now. Okay, so don't drink, don't smoke, and, and uh, don't carry on these other, you know, uh, cultures kind of thing. Let's stick to our health message. We're seeing that right now, but again, this is new. So I'm saying this to you now, we'll have a better picture, you know, in a few months of exactly how this thing goes. Because we're really waiting for the warm months to see what's going to happen there, um, if that's going to uh, cause it. So being brand new gives scientists a hesitancy to say, yeah, let's, let's just get this thing over with, because we're not sure. But with the data we have right now, I'm saying so far it's mild cases. Yeah. So, that's, uh, so that's where we're at. So we don't want to poke the bear, we don't want to make fun of the sleeping dragon. <laughs> we just want to let it be right now. So yeah, I think we're good, I think we're good. So I think I've kept you guys long enough. But I just want you to know, because there's a lot of stuff on the internet that is like, it's not being fair to the comparison of data. And you know how media is, they like to bring it up because then they have a job to scare you. Really? Keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're not talking about lifestyle and weight barriers and to more components like that, but that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing right now. Yes, Gary. Yeah, the question is next up. The reading here is called vitamin C. Yeah, minus volume. You know, anything, anything in healthcare when you bring up lifestyle. You know they're they're not gonna they're not gonna go there. But as a Seventh Day Adventist, absolutely, absolutely, vitamins. You know, uh, you know, just healthy lifestyle and what you're doing right there, drinking fluids, right, is the key. Yeah. To continue with Gary's question, what about chelation therapies? You know, I don't I don't know enough. Um, my, my my thing is um, water into the system is a great. Thing, right? uh, because it hydrates all the organs in order to get things out, right? Um, so, you know, and we have different natural things that we can do, like flax seeds and chia seeds, and, and, um, and uh, you know, if you're going down that road, then, uh, you know, charcoal and, and whatever, I would have recommended your medication and all that, because it will... It'll It'll take it out, yeah, well, right, yeah. yeah. So there's that as well. Um, you know, I'm not going to say it's good or against it, because... Obviously, I don't know enough about it, but I understand the philosophy and anything that's going to take, you know, poison out of my body, sure. <laughs> but I don't know enough about it to make it accurate. Uh, that's where my credentials come. Because like in healthcare, I'm, I'm amazed. It was just two years ago when the BC Cancer Agency uh, started to say, uh, eat more of the blueberries and antioxidant foods. That to me was a victory. <laughs> that was a victory. Showing the importance of antioxidants, foods with anti high antioxidants, uh, in our diet. So, you know, will they ever say it's diet related? Absolutely never. Never. They'll never say it's diet related. They can't, not legally anyway. Well, that's, that's the thing, right? So, but there's people, you know, in it that agree that there is. So. All right, Pastor, I know you want to go home. <laughs> No so this might be our service next week if we were doing it with like six people and, and I'm fighting off three Washington State individuals. So if you have more questions, you know, we can uh, have a last word of prayer and go. Yes, just one last question about zinc. I've heard something about zinc. Uh, with this particular virus? Yeah, something saying, um, uh, like, if you do end up, I guess, just contracting it, like zinc lozenges or something in your mouth, um, reduces your, yeah. um, the flu-like symptoms. Yeah, if you have that. Yeah. You know, when they're always talking about stuff like that, they're basically saying that there's something missing in your diet, mm -hmm. is, what, is what it's all about, right? So it's like even with, um, with prostate cancers and the, um, the pumpkin seed extracts mm -hmm. and things like that, um, because they're seeing that, you know, if we were to have full blown out 100%, 110% working immune systems, we're fine. Mm -hmm. But the problem is stress sleeping disorder. Sleep is probably one of the biggest things. You know, in a society where we get five, six hours, six, that's huge. Um, you know, four or five hours maybe, you know, uh, what we eat, you know, processed foods and all these kinds of things, we're, and we're lacking 
we're lacking. So uh, absolutely, zinc, zinc, magnesium, selenium are some of the things that uh, definitely we're finding, you know, are deficient. You know, so multivitamins. I know that the case is out of multivitamins. Does it work or does it make very expensive urine in the end, right? <laughs> Um, so it's one of those things. Uh, the best thing to do is, is to have a variety of foods. Uh, and don't negate nuts. If you're not allergic to nuts, don't negate nuts, right? Because in our world, we've negated that. We've negated the seeds and nuts. We eat pumpkin seeds, right? I mean, nobody does. But in our world, Sunday Adventist, that's where we have this message of, of a wide variety of foods. Cheeseburgers is not going to help you. Cheeseburgers and root beer is not going to help you, right? Sorry. <laughs> I guess to put it ingesting it, like having it in your diet, is just the same as say having, let's say, or something like. That. Yeah, it's always. I mean, it's always it's always best, and then with zinc too, you have to realize with any 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 vitamin, you always have to realize could you be overdosing? Mm -hmm. Okay, because Brazil nuts are are an issue like that. Con uh, eating too much uh, Brazil nuts because what do they have? Selenium. You can't have that much selenium. We need selenium, but there's a point where it becomes toxic. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to regulate how much Brazil is. So when it comes to like, oh, here's a zinc pill. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I would rather get a blood check done and they can, they can measure zinc. Mm -hmm. And is it an issue with me right now? Do I need to uptake? Like, it's just like iron. You know, iron, you know, you take an iron supplement. But if you don't need an iron supplement, right. like, if your iron's fine, then that's, that's something, right? So. You know, like I, when I got tested, I got tested. I had low B12. Mm -hmm. So that's when I had to make some changes and, and introduce some things. And I know that, uh, you know, sleeping for me is, is an issue. You know, um, that's why you can email me at 12 o'clock and I accidentally reply and it's a bad habit. But that's, if, that, if anything is going to take me out, that's it. It's my sleeping. You got to get your seven to the house. It's just, it's just huge. Um, it, because when your body is sleeping, is when it's actually repairing itself. And, and that's, that's, yeah. that's really important. And Western society, we're going crazy, not sleeping. And that's what we're seeing. Poor health is not going to settle. Yeah. Yeah, going with the sleep thing, um, Tom Brady, who is yeah. in his 40s, yeah. I was in Boston, Massachusetts, and so, you know, Tom Brady is like a deity over there. And uh, they were explaining to some of the people there were explaining to me that, like in Cape Cod type of area, that he himself has a lot of sleep every single day because if he doesn't, he's just not going to be able to compete at that level because he's getting older. He's 40 plus years and yeah. he still plays like a champion. I mean, it's amazing. So it just goes to show. We have a guy, Matt Lavella, who uh, just hit 90 years old. And the guy could, could just kick me around, no problem. He's got, he still has his muscles, right? Uh, you know, his mind is one thing, but he's physically is in incredible shape. He lives, a, you know, the, the Adventist lifestyle, so, so he's never not. I mean, God's given us an Adventist lifestyle for a reason. It's, it's there. And we know there's going to be pestilences in the last days, right? This is all foreseen, and White uh, Fairfax, he talks about it. So um, not surprised when it talks about end time events, but definitely as Adventists, we look at the fact of how things can change rapidly and how your uh, daily life can be disrupted very quickly, okay? So now we're doing this because it's a health issue. It's not a political issue. So that's why I'm okay with it. But if it began to change and they start saying, well, the only way to conquer this virus is if we all show up and start worshiping on Sunday, then I'm not going to go with that. Right. <laughs> but you can see where things may go. Right. Uh, it could be interesting. Mm -hmm. God is angry with us, right? We can see stuff happen. Oh, man. I think that's it. Pastor, you're on your phone. Come on now. <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. So I can, I can be reached uh, anytime.